Sunday afternoon was an opportunity for the Titans to sit back and watch the rest of their competition perform. The day started with all four teams in the AFC South Division tied for first place with three and two records. Both the Titan, both the Texans and the Chiefs are left on the Titans schedule this season. Houston was trying to become the first team in the division to reach the four win mark. We picked this one up in the fourth quarter where the Chiefs were in control. Thomas Jones at 100 rushing yards on the day and this touchdown right here. Jones helped the Chiefs to a 10 point lead, but with under four minutes to play, here come the Texans. Arian Foster, his second touchdown of the day makes this a 31 to 28 game. The Texans get the ball back and on their final drive, Matt Schaub will find Andre Johnson for the 11 yard touchdown. Houston with the come from behind win as they beat the Chiefs 34 to 31. The three and one Steelers hosting the Browns today. Ben Roethlisberger making his debut this season. Pittsburgh down three to nothing until Big Ben connects with Mike Wallace. The 29 yard touchdown seven to three Steelers. Rookie Colt McCoy gets a start for the Browns in his first professional game. He gets his first career touchdown pass. He finds Ben Watson. That's the only Browns TD of the day as the Steelers roll 28 to 10 over the Browns. Ravens and Patriots now and there's no love lost between these two teams. Patriots down by 10 in the fourth, but here comes Tom Brady. Brady with close to 300 passing yards on the day. This touchdown to Deion Branch makes it a 20 to 17 game. Patriots would tie the game and send it into overtime. That's where another Steven Guskowski field goal would put it away for good. The Pats move to four and one with the 23 to 21 win. Well, after Monday night's game against Jacksonville, the Titans will be back at home next Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles. Titans are still not sure what quarterback to prepare for. Kevin Cobb got his second straight start against the Falcons today. Cobb's job looks pretty easy with all these weapons, including wide receiver Deshaun Jackson. Number 10 on the reverse. He sprints his way 31 yards for the touchdown. Jackson was off to a good start, but then things got ugly for Jackson. Watch this train wreck right here. Man, Jackson and the Falcons Dante Robinson would both have to leave the game. Jackson could be out of next week's game with a concussion. We will have more on this playing status for sure throughout the week as the Titans could catch a break right there. Back to the action now. More from Cobb. This time he goes to his second receiver, Jeremy Macklin. Wide open for the 83 yard touchdown. Cobb and the Eagles offense all over the Falcons with the 31 to 17 victory. Well, as far as Monday night's game goes, the Titans are getting ready to stop the Jaguars running game. Now in his fifth season, season in the league, the Titans are getting used to seeing Jacksonville running back Maurice Jones Drew. Once again, Drew is on pace for another thousand yard rushing season. And so far, he may be the most difficult running back that the team is prepared for this year. Definitely going to be one of the best tests we've had. He's a, a good, solid back, a guy who's, who can really make things happen, does a great job of, of moving the ball down the field, and, and does a good job of controlling, you know, controlling the ball as he, in his hands. He doesn't really put it out there for you too much to get a hold of. Well, it was bound to happen sometime this year. The Nashville Predators went into last night's game against the Capitals without a loss all season. And right up until the third period, it looked like it might stay that way. But that was before Thomas Fleischman tied the game at two with this goal. And then just a few minutes into overtime, Brooks like with the redirect from Alex Ovechkin, the Caps pull off the three to two win and the Preds felt like they had this one. We were up by two and uh, anytime you're in your own building up by two, you should, uh, especially going into the third, you, you should be able to seal that one. And, you know, we had some chances, just couldn't bear down and, uh, you know, it, it's very tough for sure. Because, I mean, obviously you're going to lose leads in and out throughout the year and, uh, you know, to get seven out of the first eight points in the season is a, a positive for us and, and we got to keep moving forward here. Well, the chase for the cup continues. Only five races remain on the Sprint Cup scheduled this season. And last night it was time for the Charlotte 500. Four-time champion Jimmy Johnson shaking hands before the race as he eyes a fifth straight title. JJ in the number 48 and he has some trouble early on. He gets loose and goes for a spin on lap 33. He slides down the racetrack, but he's able to keep it out of the way. That would be key. 21 laps to go and Jimmy McMurray on the inside of leader Kyle Busch. McMurray is able to keep his foot on the gas. He powers ahead and takes the lead. From there, McMurray wins the checkered flag. Kyle Busch was second, and despite the early spin, Jimmy Johnson finishes third, which increases his points lead to 41 points now. 
We just never give up on it tonight. We knew that the track would come to us. It was just getting to that point, and unfortunately, I lost it, but luckily, I didn't hit anything. But I'm just so proud of the Slows team. These guys are working so hard. Um, you know, we did what we needed to tonight and got a great finish out of it. And coming up tonight on Electric Power Companies presents Sunday Sports Central. I know it's a mouthful. <laughs> it's a long name. Uh, yeah. We've got plenty of Titans Jaguars coverage tonight, and I've got a great story on Alteron Werner. You don't want to miss it. Okay, excellent. Looking forward to that. Right. We thank you for joining us. We'll see you tonight for News Channel 5 at 10. Good night, everybody.